Yes, we're live once again. Q and A as well. If you didn't watch in the title, if I didn't put in the title, excuse me, we're going to be some Q and A as well. Just wanted to give you some info on business credit, business business credit with no inquiry. Had an individual who wrote an email today talking about got a hard inquiry on business credit. Okay, so I want to make sure that you guys understand that process. And if you need me. I'm going to put my email here. Make sure you get my email. All my emails. Excellent. Okay. Let's get it to it. All right. So, wonderful. Oh, excellent. Okay. Let's get it to it. All right. So I had an individual email in. Okay. And they said, all right. I had an individual join. Hey, hi. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome aboard. All right. Had an individual join. Says here. Um, all right. I had an individual apply. Says, okay. So they're filling out their application for business credit with Lowe's. Yes. I just discovered a hard inquiry on my personal credit report. I never verbally nor written, gave any of my written authorization or social security on the application. Yes. So what should I do? This is a great question. And I think that uh, it's not acceptable. It's not appropriate. We know it's not right. You didn't give permissible purpose for them to be pulling your uh, report. And so you should be able to dispute that information. Now, if they were to continue to do so, you could take them to court, okay? Under the Fair Credit Report, and we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. But what we have here, we've got the dispute letter, the inquiry dispute letter. And what we have here is a contract below, okay? I contacted the, the creditors below, and they have no proof I initiated such inquiries, no written authorization, and failed to provide any permissible purpose. The reason that is, is because you haven't given them that type of information. They didn't give you, you didn't get, uh, you didn't give them your social, right? You didn't give them all that. You didn't give them the signature with your name on it. When you're doing business credit with no personal guarantee, which you seem like you were working on with Lowe's, they didn't have all that information. So you don't get the hard inquiry on your personal credit. We've worked with other vendors, other individual Dell, um, all sorts of uh, vendors. I'm trying to remember now. Uh, Quill, Uline, Granger. Um, we've had. We've we've looked into store cards with Staples. Um, I remember even prior to working in this industry, had a traveling concession stand. We did. Oh man, we did a Jetco, a Restaurant Depot, um, all sorts of things that. Only required the EIN. I never, I never had to give a social, and so they never ran my credit. Now, if they're saying, now if they're saying, oh well, you know, uh, we had to pull your credit and this and that and all that nonsense, well then prove it to me. Give me some permissible purpose. Show me the contract. Show me the written statement that has my social on it. How'd you pull my credit? I actually was in the dealer with my buddy, and they were like, we can't run credit. We can't do anything without the social. And that's why I tell these people the dealers and the banks and all this stuff, do not run my stuff, do not, I'll be back and I know my rights and we might have to go to court, right? I try not to be super offensive or threatening or anything, but I just want them to know, they know that they're not playing with an amateur. Now, we've got a bunch of sub subscribe tribe members coming in, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the thumbs up. 68 people already in here, makes it so wonderful and, and I, it just warms me to know that individuals are here to help and support one another. I'm here to help support you. So let me get to some of these hellos and good mornings and uh, vape in Hollywood and Cesar uh, or Caesar, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, Star, hi Star, how are you? Good, Drew, good to see. It's good to see the lineup, the fam, the, the individuals that we've made some relationships with. Some of you individuals, some of you men and women, some of you women and men are in the, the Awesome Life group. Okay, so some of the team is reaching out to you. You can email support with them. You get calls. You'll be able to work on your credit. Some of you guys are on the 609 tip, right? Y'all doing it yourselves. You got the email support with me. Either way, we are going to help you get to your goal, okay? Molly G. I hope I pronounced that right. Molly G. Man, you have... You have my friends thinking I'm a credit guy. Good, good. That's what you should... That's exactly it. 
if I'm educating you and you're helping out your friends and then they help out their friends, hopefully we can, you know, do our little part in the world, right? So some big thinkers out there, some big time entrepreneurs, the, the Zuckerbergs and the Musks the, and, and all those guys who are doing these big picture things. But this is the foundation right here. This is the backbone of, I believe, the economy along with a lot of other you know things but if you don't get good credit you really can't do anything so i'm glad this is working out for you and your family and your friends this is great so we just got this email in as well i've consolidated my student loans to now net but the others are still listed individually how do i remove the individual ones this is great those suckers will come off i've seen this time and time again with student loans okay if you don't have that student loan new excuse me Stop with him. If you don't have that student loan new and fresh and paying on that, they want the money, right? So if you've consolidated your loan, you're paying that on time, which is great. Good for you. Wonderful. You're kicking. You're kicking it, right? Kicking it in high gear. You're coming in hot, right? So you're paying on time. You're getting all that good on time payment history. Yes. You can go ahead and dispute those with the 609 letters, knock those suckers off. I've seen it happen for People close to me, I've seen it happen to clients and customers. I've seen it happen for, I mean, for me, I had an old student loan that was sitting there. I disputed and the sucker went away, okay? I was fortunate to be able to get some goodwill. I was able, I was fortunate to be able to get all good on-time payment history after being 90, 120 days, being super delinquent, right? Everyone's different. Some people get all, I think we've had an individual who got a, like 30 some plus student loans off there reports, five student loans, seven student loans. So it can happen for you. It will happen for you. Stick with it. Again, my email is at the very top of this chat before individuals start coming in. So make sure you've got both my emails. Do not hesitate to reach out to me. All right. Do not hesitate. I will sit here until I get everybody's email for, uh, for real. I do and want to make sure that you understand because again, you're helping. I'm helping. Everyone helps and this world will be a better place. Appreciate the process. Great results. Thanks, Sydney. Excellent. What up, Weaver? Uh, breakout. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, my fave, Brandon. Thank you. Progress slowing down. Said the progress is started real quick in the first couple rounds, right? And then slowed down third round. Yeah. You'll see some waves, right? So it's not linear. So it's a little bit like a stock market ticker, right? Or anything with life. Working out, health, your car, you know, you got this. It goes good in the beginning, you got a little, a little bump in the road, you need some tires, and you need oil change, and all of a sudden, oh, they get it, a little accident, and then you got anything, right? So stick with the plan. Just get out there, reach out with the collector letters as well. Start complaining if you need to with the CFPB, BBB, right? They don't like that kind of stuff. Letters can be wonderful, okay? Occasionally, occasionally, get it drunk, get it. Uh, occasionally, you might have to make a call. Or two. I don't tell that to everybody. everybody. All right, just the secrets of tips, especially when it comes to goodwill. And I'm going to tell you about this. Bank of America, and this is from an individual, one of the subscribe tribe members, and we'll get back to your questions. Uh, Bank of America recently hit him with a late payment, said, hey, you know, what's going on? Let's try to send the goodwill, try to get a call. And they said, ah, we don't deal with that. Now, you can send the late payment dispute letter, which we have, and it basically says, hey, you need to prove to me that I was late. I mean, we got this sucker right here. You need to prove to me that I was late. You've listed as 30 days under FCRA, so forth and so on. But the goodwill, you might have to make a call. You might have to send another letter. It took me several times, right, to get that up. So that's part of the process. You can do it. You absolutely can. You can get these negative items off. You can get the student loans. You can get the business credit like we were talking before. I'm, uh, some of you might have missed. So on the replay, you'll see it. But the business credit with no personal guarantee comes with no hard inquiries on your personal credit. And we had an individual who got a hard inquiry on their personal without giving a social security number, okay? Without giving their social security number, without giving their personal information, they went ahead and looked into that person's, get close to the mic. I'm gonna get a better mic, guys. That person's inquiry in, into their credit. They're not supposed to, okay? They can't do so without that permissible purpose. That's why we have the letters talking about, and I have this letter for, for a minute uh, as an example letter here. Uh, I'm going to print out a new one, but y'all get fresh new ones at 609creditpair.com. We can do the work for you at theawesomelifegroup.com. I've worked very closely with the team. Myself, Cornita, who's on that side of the awesome life, 
consistently, consistently updating lenders, consistently working on our processes. And that's what we're working on now. Core logic as well. For inquiries is something you probably want to seal and freeze. That's right. You hear it in here first. All right. Get them inquiries off. Not only have we talked about ARS, SageStream, LexisNexis, Innovus, but what we're seeing is SageStream and CoreLogic do house a lot of these hard inquiries. Now, when you send this person who got this hard inquiry on there, and I do that because they're not supposed to be there, for their Lowe's card with no personal guarantee, they send this out. They're not going to be able to provide that social. You can go ahead and complain. You can take them to court. $1,000 per violation. You can call up the bureau and say, hey, I know this for a fact. Boom. I will take you to court. $1,000 per violation. And you'll get it off, you'll get your winnings, you'll get your money in your pocket. All right. Wanted to know. Hey, Brandon, wanted to know if I should go with credit counseling to get rid of four of my credit cards, if that's a good idea, or does it ruin your credit? Okay. Will it ruin your credit? Now it's subjective, right? But will it affect your credit? Absolutely, it will affect your credit. It can be looked at as bad as key derogatories or BKs and things of this nature. Okay. Could be 50 to 100 points, depending. Yes. Depends where you are in the process. But let's say hypothetically they go on their own, they're charged off. That's also going to affect your score. You could potentially look to exercise your equity. You could look to say, hey, I want to see an original signed contract. I want to make sure the proper consideration is put up for a contract. It's very specific contract laws. Now, with the credit repair and credit, you are allowed to dispute under Fair Credit Reporting Act anytime you wish. Okay, if you don't think something is 100% verifiable, if it's obsolete, inaccurate, outdated, if it's uh, reporting incorrectly on the wrong spots. So some people are like, I had something classified as a credit card, revolving credit when it was a loan. That's a violation. People talk about these Metro 2 compliance violations. That's more what they're talking about, right? And we're looking into processes like these. But you have those options to prior to going to credit counseling, prior to doing BKs, settlements, uh, asking for forbearances on certain loans or certain cards. If you've come into a hardship, some people have dealt with specific hardships that they can get a, a 30 days, 60 days, 90 days off from paying. These are other options. I don't know what's going on with you, Virginia, but these are other options that may be available to you prior to simply letting everything go and and going through the counseling work and be very specific with these counselors. I don't know if they're a debt relief program where they're just not going to pay your bills and they're going to hold your money in an escrow account and not saying that it's good or bad. I'm just trying to say what it is. They might hold your money in an escrow account. If they don't pay anything, then it, your score comes tumbling down and quote unquote is ruined. Right. And then they go ahead and say, Oh, we're going to settle for you on your behalf. And so they'll pay a quarter of what they're supposed to. They keep the rest. Some of them work like that, not all of them, but some of them do. So you just want to be cautious because a lot of this you can do for yourself. This is what we try to educate, teach one another. And if anyone has gone through credit counseling and thinks that it may not be the best, let us know. But exhaust all your other resources first is what I would say. Star says, yes, friends, the BBB was able to remove a charge off for me. Okay, so this is what's great. And this is why I love doing these live streams and getting individuals in the mix right here now, because credit repair starts now. Uh, Star says, yes, friends, the BBB was able to remove a charge off for me. This is what individuals um, can do for themselves. You can complain to Better Business Bureau. You can complain to the CFPB. It can help. It can work. Star is living proof. Okay. And some people will say, oh, man, I'm going to that third letter. I don't know. Should I complain? I don't know if it's going to do any good. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Like I said, before, exhaust all your resources. And more than times, I got a comment the other day was like, you know, I don't know if this is going to work for me. It kind of seems like this just, it's so much. Individuals like yourself, 129 people here. Yeah. On a Saturday, it's true. It's not the majority, right? The majority of people out there struggle and we want to get that message out to them. So they know, right? The, the person was like, oh, I don't know, the majority of people, the majority of people are not here on a Saturday afternoon working their tails off to make themselves better for their families and for themselves. And yes, you can get these deletions. Well, actual charge offs. Oh, great. Mark Anderson. This is a good question. And I'm going to field this as best I can for you. Well, actual charge offs that are mine be deleted. OK, great. So, again, it's not whether it is or isn't yours. It's whether if they can verify that 100% mark 
okay, Mr. Anderson. So let's say somebody puts something on your credit report, okay, and you're not sure if it's yours. Many people don't know. Look, I haven't looked at my report. I didn't, I hadn't, I looked at my report now, but I hadn't looked at my report for a long time. So when I saw these things, I didn't know who these people were. I didn't know who I owed. I didn't know. And people do get scammed, okay? So what you're asking for is verification. There are many people out there who have gone through the process of going through charge-offs, going to collections, going through all this stuff. They send a letter. They ask for validation and verification. They, the collectors and credit bureaus and creditors, can't abide by the laws that are there to protect you, and they have to delete it. If it cannot be verified 100%, it must be deleted. Those are the rules. Those are the law. If there are compliance issues, if there are violations, if they do something to violate during the dispute process, you send a letter to the credit bureaus, the 609 dispute letters, or any other amalgamation that we have at 609creditpair.com. We have special letters as well, okay? Spending, sending collection validation letters. The collector is supposed to let you know and send a letter saying, hey, we're going to cease all collection activity on this while we do the investigation. So if they're able to verify prior, prior or during, excuse me, during the time that they're supposed to cease all activity, that's a violation. Or if you have a charge off, like you're saying actual charge off that has a balance on it and the collector has a balance, that's a violation. There's over, and this is, this is uh, getting into the, the nitty gritty and there's over 300, 300 things that they have to be compliant with the credit bureaus. That's just the credit bureaus. There's over 300. Okay. So actual, I don't know if they're yours or not. I don't know if the collector knows that they're yours or not. I don't know who knows. I don't know. I couldn't do that. Okay. Are you 100% sure? Are you 100% sure after four or five years? On top of that, the credit bureaus are not 100% sure. Nobody really knows. That's what you're asking for. And this is why people are getting uh, shafted, so to speak. They're getting double whammy. A creditor can continue to, to put stuff on there while a collector can. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. All right, let's see. Any business credit cards that you know that have no personal guarantors? Yes, but you have to work up to the process. So those and Apple and Walmart and all these store cards and staples and um, I'm trying to think what else off the top of my head. Dell, but they also have some stipulations. I remember Dell wanted two years. So we, it was funny. We have two years, but it had us at like a year or something like that as business. Uh, so they didn't want to give us a Dell card and we had to take care of things. Also, your sick code, your the code in which industry you work in is also very important. So they may not prefer high risk markets yeah financial services consulting is fine consulting is not considered a high risk neither is education yeah but if you start working in let's say hey you know i uh if somebody works out there and they're in banking or financing or loans or mortgages that might be a high risk so your code for where you are and i've seen it it pulled up on god i'm trying to remember what ein I think it was some type of benefits or something the company was looking into or whatnot. And it, the EIN actually pulled up our code and it said, oh, this is the industry you're in. Okay, cool. So that, that can be a judgment on a lot of things as well. And you can work directly with, I mean, we can, we can help you as well. We've, we've worked with clients as well. But educating you, making sure that you're getting the process done economically as well is important. So nav.com has great information on business credit. You can see all your information, your trade lines, your codes, uh, where, how many employees you have, how many employees you may not have. I mean, if it's uh, an LLC, if it's a C Corp, all that stuff is going to go into that information on that, onto your uh, reports. Um, so you'll be able to control that. So we actually had to call up, I think Equifax or I can't remember which one we called and we had to have the code and the the years updated and um, I think well, there was something else reporting inaccurately. And this is what's interesting. On the consumer side, it's different. The letters, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, on business side is different and it's business, right? So they want to make money. And now you are, it's interesting, you're on the other side now, right? So you're doing business. So they want to make sure to continue to do that. DMB does as well because that's how they are able to continue their business. 
So they'll help you out over the phone. We actually found it very easy to update things. Now we have this many years in business. This is this is our actual industry that we're working in. You know, so if you find yourself in one of these quote unquote classified high risk markets, you might find that you're actually doing more consulting or education. And maybe you're doing more freelance. I don't know what yours might be, but that might also have an, in a parameters and parameters on the business credit cards you can get with no personal guarantee. And a lot of people are not going to let you know or know that. So the business credit, it does go on your paid X score. It does look at that. It does look at your score, but they also might look at the industry. Certain, I know certain banks and certain credit card lenders don't work in certain industries. And uh, I have, I've actually found that it may not be necessary for you. And I don't want to necessarily say any banks, but there are some, so it's very specific to you and what you need to do for your business. I like saying business. Uh, but if you have more questions about that, feel free to email me. Okay. How to get off bankruptcy. How to hire you to get out of bankruptcy. Okay. It falls off in 2020. So it's pretty old, which is great. Uh, we just had a gentleman who emailed in. He got his bankruptcy off uh, today, September 7th. Well, yesterday, excuse me. Uh, he says, you're the man. I got Equifax results today and BK has been deleted from my report. The other two, TransUnion Equifax, hadn't taken it off yet, but they were, we're still working on it. I'm in communication with this individual, helping them get the rest of BKs off. And it is possible for you in Gone and 5 Coal. Um, if you're looking at that process, LexisNexis, right? The three bureaus, dispute those suckers, dispute the accounts under the bankruptcy first. I've worked with this individual, coached them up. That's why they're able to get the bankruptcy out. If you want to hire us, we can do it for you, theawesomelifegroup.com. I understand bankruptcy does take some time. It is, you know, a big, big deal, right? And you can go up 100 points, you know, depending on what, what's going on with your reports. All right. Chris Johnson, how late am I? Uh, not too late. All right. I'm going to make sure to get through some of your questions. I know you guys have. How much for your business program, if you have one, uh, right now? Uh, we ha you know what? I have a business credit website. Let me put that up for you guys. So we are um, just expanding and we're hiring a few individuals in training. So there's my business credit website. Okay. So it may take a little time to get around to 100% um, capacity for new business credit clients, but we are getting back to that. Okay. Let's see. How do you clear dispute resolve consumer dispute? Okay, great. So one, okay, that's a funny emoji. Uh, one thing, the demand for a, an investigation letter is fantastic. You can demand your investigation. You tell them they can't use the Oscar system. You can complain to the CFPB. We've seen complaints to the AG, the BBB, been very, very helpful. And uh, I, I think I've gone over this before, and I want to make sure that I get equal opportunity for everyone involved who's asking questions. I know you guys come and spend your time on Saturday with me, so I want to make sure that we get to y'all. And if I don't, make sure to email me because I will respond 100%. But again, they can't just use eOscar. They can't just merely par parrot what the creditors and collectors are saying. They need to do a reasonable investigation. So if they are saying things like, oh, well, the consumer disagrees or we think it's resolved. We don't want to... We don't, we don't want to do any more work. We don't want to do any more disputes. You can send that letter and you can file a complaint. You can take them to court. Okay. You know, play any games with these fools. And I keep seeing it consistently. People go to court and they win. They get deletions very quickly. I'm not saying that's everybody. And of course, I can't give legal advice, but that's what I'm seeing come back. Okay. Let's see. Experience State 7 Eleven. Wow. 7 Eleven FICO removed three portfolio recovery collections. Camille, congratulations. All right. Uh, Experience. Experience went up 119 points waiting on TransUnion now. Yeah, they like to play games. Each one does their own thing. They are independent private companies, but they start to follow suit. They all start to share the same information because none of them want to be the individual that can't get you qualified for something when other people are able to report and get those trade lines on their reports. They're, they want information too. It's a game. It's a delicate balance that they have to play and they want people we have a wonderful subscribe tribe here, 150 people on the live stream today. Thank you for the thumbs up. If you're one of those people that can qualify, let's do it, right? I want to be, I mean, if I'm a bank, I want to be able to lend. I want to be able to get your information on my reports, Experian or TransUnion or the, the reporting company. Okay. 
Yeah. Sent out the second letter, they're saying it's verified. Yeah, it's part of the process, part of what they do. It's what they want to do to get you to do what you're doing. You know, worry, oh man, I sent out second. Man, second letter, that's only 60 days, right? You're on track. We've got letters to send directly to the collector. If you want, you could stave off, do a demand for investigation letter, and then 30 days later, you could do your third round, right? You can file the complaint. You can start the process. Look, start it. I didn't get a method of verification. I didn't get the um, the original instrument or anything, any contract, nothing, right? Start getting ready, okay? I'm gonna put up uh, information for you guys here on some case law here in a minute. Let me make sure that I get through some, as Brown spoke on business credit, Chris Johnson. Uh, spoke about business credit a little bit, Mr. Johnson, and uh, you could always watch the replay if necessary. Uh, and again, and again, 609creditrepair.com, theawesomelifegroup.com. You can do it for yourself at 609creditrepair.com. If you're watching the replay, you can hit us up at theawesomelifegroup.com. We can do it for you. Okay. That's what the scent proof is. Wow, this is great. So, comfort lining. Uh, we've seen, been working together on and, and different levels. We've been one side and the other and this and that, which is great. And uh, good to see that you have proof that two accounts are not yours and they still will not delete. Equal facts still not delete. Okay. So make sure, make sure that you start that process, reach out potentially to consumer protection lawyer. They will be all over it. That is a lot of funds for you. This is great. Now, small claims is okay, but you can kick it up to federal court. And it could be a federal issue, especially since Equifax is uh, where they are and you're where you are and you can file. Now, the creditor also is in violation, okay? So you wanna make sure that the creditor on their end does their job. And I think I, I read something about this on the last live stream where the creditor sent in information. And it was actually B of A. They sent in information. They said they sent in information for the credit bureaus. Nothing happened. 30 days later, 60 days later. Look, if the creditors, they report your credit history inaccurately, which they're doing, defamation and financial injury, extent of damages incurred by the wrong parties as deemed by the courts. U.S. Courts of Appeals, Ninth Circuit, Nelson versus Chase Manhattan. And not only that, you can also take the credit bureaus to court, Equifax, okay? So you have both. A lawyer would be salivating over this. If I was a lawyer, which I'm not, obviously, but if I was, I would be salivating all over that because you have them dead to rights. You have proof, proof. And I would mark it. I would be like, look, my client can't get business credit, can't get business loans, can't get a car. No, without excessive interest rates, a mortgage. I'd be suing into the, the tens of the hundreds of thousands of dollars against these guys. They don't want that. Okay, so complaint, CFPB, your local local AG, you, there is actually local guys. The state has its own consumer financial protection bureaus. The state has amazing resources for you guys um, beyond them playing these games. Senators, House of Reps, right? Your reps, your senators, your Congress people, they do not play games. Much like I tell you this stuff and I'm like, look, you can get this done. These people actually have power and get this stuff squared away. This should be done today, today, today. I don't care if it's Saturday. Call them up. You get your stuff disputed and deleted, okay? This is great. I think individuals have worries and concerns about this. I have a collection that's a year old for about 1200 bucks, and I dispute it. And still on my credit report. Should I dispute it again? Or will they take me to court, take out a judgment? Okay. Let me explain to you about this judgment in court and all this craziness that they want to play games and frighten you with, okay? I personally, I'll tell you my personal story, okay? I didn't dispute anything. They still took me to court and tried to sue me and I won. I won, okay? Me and my attorney won, all right? They couldn't provide any contract and they completely dismissed the case. They didn't even want to go to court. They were frightened. They were frightened. You are disputing, you're concerned that they'll sue you. They won, how are they going to do that, right? So they're not sending you any proper validation and then they want to go to court in front of a, a judge and then not present proper validation, right? So the law is on your side. You can dispute, people get worried. You can dispute, you can take them to court. You have the power, okay? Now, what you can do, what I think is a, a great idea to do prior to even disputing or worrying about them taking your court or whatnot is get you some good positive trade lines, 
Okay. See what you can do there and boost your score up. You may not feel as indebted to these silly ass, excuse my language. Okay. Silly collectors who are trying to railroad you. Right. So we talked about the self lenders, the new coast direct, get you 5k, the right. My jewelry club card. I can see y'all saying it with me. 5k. Right. So you can get 10k right there. The hut and chase. The Ox Publishing. You can get yourself 14K of new credit. I think that's what we've allocated it at. 14K of new credit. And boost up your score, self lender, secure credit card builder, credit card builder, credit builder card, excuse me, credit builder card. You can have a lot of available credit. This $1,200 little rinky dink, they don't look nothing to you while you dispute and while you get this knocked off. And they want to take it, you, you can show up. I'm not, I'm not a lawyer or whatever. I don't want to talk to the Lord, but you can show up and just be like, look, I want to see some contracts. I want to see I've said people call me and be like, look, I'm not worried about these fools. They're trying to do this nonsense in the court. They're not going to. They didn't even show up. Some of them don't even show up. I had an individual who's, who went to court and their uh, processing attorney didn't even show up. The, the prosecution didn't even show up. It was completely dismissed. They won. Okay. They can't just get a judgment against you. They have to go to court. Now, don't ignore it. Don't get a default judgment, but you'll be okay. And that's what's so important. That's what's so important. Okay. All right. Is it true? You have to dispute when handwritten in a certain color or ink. Uh, no, not 100%. You can. It is helpful. Uh, I personally, I personally did my own. I typed mine and was fine. It got everything deleted. I've seen stuff handwritten. I've seen stuff typed. I've seen did some stuff handwritten. I've done some stuff typed. I've done some stuff with highlighters. I've done some stuff with not. I've done some stuff with color paper. I've done some stuff with not. I've done some stuff with staples. I've done some stuff with not. Legal paper, uh, it, it, it all it all can work because what you're doing is you're using the law. The law is what gets deletions. The law. Say it like Stallone. And I am the law. Uh, it's the law. So any Mickey Mouse stuff that we do, I do, or you do, or whomever, or whatever wants to do, um, it's fine. It's fine. It can help. The blue ink can help, right? It's an original. The notarization helps, makes it a legal affidavit that must be responded to. The certified letters, it can help. But for the most part, I wouldn't sweat it too much. Get those disputes out. Get those disputes out. Thank you very much for the super chat. Let's see if you have a question. I'm looking to see if you have a question, Mr. Cesar. Cesar. I think I think we did go over your question in the beginning. So if you have others, I'll try to get to it again, guys. You can email me. It's in the email uh, if you... I can't get out, but there we go. Okay. What's a good credit card to build regards to building credit for fair credit score? Okay. So you have fair credit score, unsecured cards you want. You don't necessarily want to go the secured route because you can, you have the availability to go ahead and get unsecured. Yes. Right. So you have fair card. Yeah. Look into it. Um, you know, the chases and the capital ones tend to be a bit, more lenient. B of A has been pretty good. Uh, some stuff to probably stay away from. Barclay seems to be really challenging. I, you know, they, they're they're a little uptight. <clears throat> um, U.S. banks maybe stay away from. They 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 scan everything. They they look into ARS, which you can seal if you don't want U.S. bank to look into it. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Some of the some of your local credit unions will be good with Fair. I had a buddy who got really good interest rate. Trying to think what else. Any, if you have any military, military background or something like that, Navy Fed, Pen Fed, these guys are going to get big, big unsecured limits even when you have fair credit. Okay, so that's what I would look into. Make sure you're paying on time. Keep that utilization under ten percent. I like to say ten percent, but thirty percent is a good rule of thumb. Let over the phone. Okay. Oops, four from. PCUA two through a couple, uh, reading a validation letter over the phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess you could read it. Oh, I see what you're saying. You disputed a couple through Credit Karma. Uh, okay, well, we know Credit Karma is not that accurate. Just make sure that you, you know, you wait the 30 days and then you dispute. Speaking of which, I wanna to talk to you guys about an individual who asked uh, what, they sent out the letters on August 24th, they received them on the 27th, do I have until, do they have until the 26th or the 27th of September? How do you count the 30 days? Okay. 
And I had another person who was like, uh, not not one of the subscribe tribe uh, members here, a fan, right? But they were like, look, you know, you got to account for uh, mail. I'm like, we do, we do account for mail, but it's postmark, okay? They don't have all this time to be mailing all this nonsense and be like, oh, well, you know, the mail took five or six days. No, they have 30 days from when they get the letters to postmark your response. So if they put in their little envelope, whenever they probably have these little machines that do the, uh, I've seen them, I've seen them, uh, that do the, the mail. Um, boom, it's got to say the 27th. And yes, they have the, till the 27th, not the 26th, the 27th. So they receive them on the 27th, they have the 27th to respond to you. Assuming that's 30 days, which... August has 31 days. Ah, I see why you're asking that question. Um, you just count the 30. So I'm imagining they might have till the 26th then if there's an extra day. Or maybe the 28th. Uh, how much, let's see, how do you get the original creditor off the reports? You can dispute them. With the 609 lenders, you can, you can use the 623 method. You could ask to exercise your equity and see if they have a contract on you, which is usually only if it's, not with a collector, or it's still kind of in that gray area. Uh, and you can dispute directly with the collector. Surprisingly enough, when it comes off the collector, drops off there, uh, sometimes it will come off from the charge off. All right. William Rivera, shout out, Brennan. Freezes ARS first for BK, then dispute important. All right. Yes. Um, and we dispute directly with Lexus Nexus. You know, freeze Lexus Nexus on Lexus Nexus. We have letters for ARS, SageStream, uh, CoreLogic. I mean, the beyond committed packages. Beyond committed. Yes. All right. Great. Give me my email. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah. Credit score a little low to apply for Amex. Five fifty nine. You you were. Uh, declined but you could always dispute that inquiry now here's the thing you just were here's a secret get into real tight uh you just applied but you're like okay well yeah i, I mean maybe i did apply i mean look at this with 90 days stuff gets purged after 90 days give it a few months 90 days they purge applications you have a shot in a window there at that timetable to go ahead and dispute such items Vape in Hollywood. Thank you so much. And I've seen you. We've, we've talked. Client of ALG. Yes. So we do have a business credit wing and you are a client. Let's uh, get you, get, shoot me over an email. We'll discuss it and see what we can do to help you out and anyone else. Email me and let me know what you want if you need business credit. Okay. Oh, man. How long does BK take to be removed from a credit report? It just depends. Some people do it in 30 days. Some people do it in four days or five days. It just depends, okay? Or four or five days, four or five months. It just depends. How do you complain to BBB and CFPB? Great. They have online complaints. Also, hhs.gov for your medical complaints. They have cfpb.gov, BBB. All online, you can come in, you hit file complaint, it walks through the process, it's super easy. And it's almost like they want you to just file complaints there. <laughs> All right. Mm, yeah, uh, Innovis had a scary amount of information uh, about me. Um, don't worry, I'm already snapping next. Brian, I wonder if you, I think maybe Brian, you emailed him because I just did a, a video on Innovis that's coming out soon. Uh, yeah, a scary amount. Innovis, Lexus, Nexus, these core logic guys, get your reports, dispute these negative items. Don't let them make money on your good name and falsify and or keep inaccurate information on there and unverified stuff, okay? Falsely charged eviction, settled out of court with apartment, argued with Carter Young already, argued with Carter, argued with them already, I guess, okay. Okay, well, if you are falsely charged an eviction, you know that you are not evicted and they have to prove that. And so if they're continuing to defame your character and your financial stability, right? Like we talked about, now you counter court, right? Counter suits. We talked about this extent of damages. You can get this done. These fools should not be able to do that. It is nonsense. And I've seen this consistently. People will say, I went into the leasing office or center, talked to the manager, whomever, got approval, said, hey, I'm gonna move out. I got the 30 days. I know it's early. 
They could say, okay, you didn't fulfill the lease contract, but they can't say it's an eviction. An eviction is very specific. That vacate to quit note, that notice to quit or vacate needs to happen, that you have to have that. They have to have signed documentation of it. It's not acceptable. I sent out my first round of lettuce and each bureau sent out a set of credit report back. Why is that? Okay. So they're supposed to send you an updated report. They're supposed to show you a report on what is deleted, what quote unquote was verified or remains and is updated. Yes. A lot of stuff you'll see. Deleted, 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 updated, verified or remains, deleted, deleted. You'll see a lot of stuff. You'll see stuff like that. What you can do is you can adjust fire and you'll see it and utilize those. That's what I did. What you can do is you can utilize those like I did and not pay credit monitoring if you do not want to. If things are tight for me, I was like, man, credit monitoring at that time. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm going to get these free reports from them, utilize as much as I can, go the most economical route in the first place. Right now, if you're doing good, if you make some cash money. All right. Some of y'all doing real good. I know you are doing real good out there. Uh, then that may, that may not be an issue for you. You get the credit monitoring. You don't worry about it. You get the updated deletions on your black and white reports and keep those. Actually, sometimes they send them in color. Keep those because if everything, quote unquote, gets reinserted, which it shouldn't, okay? But anything ever does, we have a reinsertion letter. You can send them those deletions and prove to them, hey, this stuff's supposed to be taken off. Y'all playing games. I have the proof and they will. Excuse me. I thought I was gonna sneeze there. I'm trying to get to Tokyo with my 667 Equifax. It's been, pop excuse me, I think I'm gonna say <laughs> Pardon me. Pardon me, guys. Apologize. I can't have no allergies, all right? We don't get no allergies. We give allergies to those credit bureaus, okay? Now, thank you so much. Thank you for all the thumbs up. I appreciate it. If this video is helping you out or you're watching the replay, please give a thumbs up. We've got a great, great team here. Again, 609creditrepair.com. If you want to do it on your own, you want to get an economic route, you want to get email support with me and the team. If you want us to do it, the Awesome Life Group, where you've got secure client portal access, you've got emails and phones and support and a team working for you, we've got it all for you, man. Credit Repair is fantastic. I'm happy that I can be of service to you guys each and every day. I work on this every day, every day. Okay, uh, let's see. I I'm missing a few here. Okay, follow the next, next part. Um, I have evictions filed on Lexus Nexus report, but all dismissed. Oh, wow, this is a different individual. Two from the same person who tried to block me from moving out. Jeez, how do I dispute those? Okay, you can definitely dispute with your 609 letters directly to Lexus Nexus, okay? Absolutely, all right? This is interesting. If you have the original creditor or whomever tried to get you to not move out and you have their information, you can dispute directly with them. And you send them a letter. And if they don't start responding within 30 days, you can haul them down to court. You can have them prove that it was dismissed and you can sue them for financial. Now, it's not on the big three, but what it's doing is it's keeping you from getting into an apartment, which could then lead to all sorts of other financial repercussions. Because being in specific places makes it different to where you work, right? Where you work. Oh, I can't get an apartment where it's close to my house. So now I got to drive. Now I got gas. Now I got car depreciation. Yeah. All that goes into it. Now, if they want to continue to play games, right? Complaints, AG level, AG, attorney general, your area. Do not let these individuals defame you in any way. It's unfortunate. I hate, I hate these things. Okay. I'm going to say individual, I hate this stuff that people are getting these false evictions. Drives me up the wall. Okay. Let me get off my soapbox here. Yeah. Send out my first round of lettuce. Oh, no, we got that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. Oh, geez. hey, Brandon. As a military vet, would it behoove me to get rid of Wells Fargo and go with Navy Fed? I worry about the amount of branches that credit union has. Thanks for the feedback. Hey, let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about these branches of credit unions. People be like, you know, I got a credit union, it's local. Okay, 
CU Anytime Network, the CU Network. I think it is a credit union network. CU Online, CU Network, okay? It's the co-op empowers credit unions and people. Oh, 5,000 plus shared branches, 30,000 ATMs nationwide, okay? So I'm not personally a part of Navy Fed, okay? But I know of someone who was actually a part of Navy Fed and they could use the ATM for free that was like walking distance from that person's apartments. Was able to get cash out, put money in. A lot of stuff is digital nowadays anyway. So what you're gonna do, you probably use the, the cell phone, now, if you want to walk into a branch, which I like, because I don't trust, I don't trust all this technology, okay? Okay? But burn too many one times, okay? You can walk into a local branch as part of the CU, uh, the, the co-op network, the C-O-O-P, the co-op network or the CU online branch, right? So there's plenty of branches. When I travel, I have a credit union. I have used some banks as well. I have credit unions as well. I have different credit cards, whatever, right? Everybody has their own stuff, got some stuff. Also, I'll let you guys know, if you are traveling, Charles Schwab does some really good stuff with travel cards. They get ATM fees and all that stuff back, okay? Same thing with a lot of credit unions. They'll do the same thing as well. So even if you're outside the network, they might reimburse you, and you've got 30,000, 5,000 plus national branches. When I traveled, when I was in other state, I actually was able to go into other local credit unions. They partnered. No problem, no harm, no foul. Went right into my bank account, credit union account. I was able to get cash out. I was able to make adjustments, no problem, no fees, no no problem. So would it behoove you to get rid of Wells Fargo? Well, if Wells Fargo isn't charging you anything and you can keep them, hey, you might want to keep them, okay? Look into Navy Fed, see what they can do for you. If it's a better situation, it makes sense for you, then you might want to do that. And also, you may not want to keep all your eggs in one basket, yeah? All right. Great. This is happening more often. Collectors are not appearing on the report, which is great, but they're still trying to collect. OK, so has anyone dealt with this collector? They are reporting. They are not reporting credit uh, credit bureaus yet. Excuse me, credit bureaus yet. But apparently Macy's sold them my account. I sent a collection validation letter. They're just ignoring it. Right. They're not supposed to ignore it. And after 30 days, just like they send you a Dunning letter, where they'll say, oh, well, you know, after 30 days, this is null, that this is uh, your debt. You can be like, after 30 days, this is null and void. This has tacit agreement, right? So they, they can't come after you. But if they are collecting on you and they aren't able to collect and they're not on your reports, what are they gonna do, right? What, do you, what, what are they gonna do? And they don't have validation because they're not sending you anything. So you can keep it up. You can keep sending letters if you want. You can watch to see if it comes on the bureaus. You can complain to the CFPB. And what that can happen is if you continue that process of disputing directly with you, I've seen it in black and white. I've seen letters come in that say, we will no longer pursue collection activities. Your account will now say zero here. Have a good day, basically. So you potentially can do that, all right? You want to freeze Lexus next before you send your first round of letters. If you have a BK, you potentially could. If you have negative items on there, you want to dispute directly with them. Yeah, freezing can help. Let's see what we got. Oh. Man, I'm sorry that happened to you. I had to file bankruptcy due to some medical issues there. Uh, it has been over a year since I completed it. How do I fix it now? It's a great question because people will go through BKs. They do need to kind of wait till this completely 100% discharge. A lot of people don't know that if you do get a discharge BK, the creditors, collectors, and the debtor, the, the, basically the people that you potentially could owe money to, if you have some big windfall within a certain amount of time, usually six months, they can come back and ask for it. So. Right. So even after you leave the trustees situation and the trustees hearing and all that good stuff, uh, it's still not 100 percent finalized. They still. Right. So it's been over a year. So great. Now is great. You can go ahead, get your dispute on, get the Lexus Nexus frozen up, dispute directly with Lexus Nexus. Check your Lexus Nexus guys. I've had people tell me that they've had tax liens on their stuff that are not supposed to be there anymore. Tax liens are supposed to be gone. It's the law. They're not allowed to report that information. Had an email. Someone emailed me. They're like, hey, man, I got what, what's going on? 
I'm like, you know, send the letter. They're not supposed to have it. And if it's on LexisNexis, well, in public records, you can dispute that. Once it's on LexisNexis, it becomes a lot easier to dispute. Dispute the accounts included with the bankruptcy. Get those nasty things off. By the time the bankers are sitting in the bureaus, they'll be like, we can't verify with LexisNexis. And they actually say on the reports they verify with LexisNexis. We can't, we don't have any accounts listed with it. You can also update your addresses with the bureaus. So if you move, the address isn't associated with it anymore. It becomes very difficult for them to 100% verify because they're not going to the courthouse. They're not able to. Yeah. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, right. That's right. I'm trying to get to Tokyo. I forgot about that. Trying to travel. Yeah, so you want to get the travel credit cards, um, 100 points in that. Wow, I emailed you and the time between boosted 100 points in 30 days. Wow. So trying to get to Tokyo, 667, 607, uh, 602, and 580. So you want to come up just a little bit more. Those high earning miles cards uh, usually want really good credit, very, very good credit, right? So you're in the ballpark when you get up into the high 600s and in the 700s. So... AU trade lines can be helpful to you as well. Getting your own self lender. People have boosted a lot with self lender. Depends. I'm like, say, I don't know your specific situation. You want to get keep getting that negative stuff off. All right, keep getting that negative stuff off. When you're ready, you can apply and get those cards. Not only are the travel cards important, cash back cards are going to be very lucrative for you as well. I know. I think City has like two percent cash back. You want to be getting back at about two percent on your purchases, 2%. So at two times the miles, you'll see it out there, two times the miles. You go through bonuses. If you get a couple, few cards, you should be a-okay. The other thing about Japan, I don't know if you wanna go in the fall and winter, but if you do, it's uh, less expensive. It's considered off-peak. Uh, summer is more on-peak, but it's still very economical to go, very economical. Actually, the dollar is stronger than the Japanese yen out there, so you'll, you'll be a little bit wealthier. All right. Oop, okay. All right, let's see. we'll go all the way up. Okay. One of the credit from my letter. There's a billion statements from T-Mobile. One of the creditors responded to my letter. They didn't send me any validation. They just sent me a billion statements from T-Mobile. That's a lot of state. That's a lot of statements. But I get it. You get a lot of statements. I've seen this before. Uh, and yeah, it's not. It's not validation. It, it's not 100% verified. Anyone could draft up, draft up an invoice or a bill to you and send it to you. Much like the inquiries, permissible purpose, right? The section 604 for permissible purpose for inquiries. Same thing with contracts, right? Section 611, section 1681, okay? They've gotta have true proof, true blue proof. Not anyone could just put anything on your reports. It means anyone could, you know, get themselves cleared through bonds and licenses and get that Oscar system and start putting things on people's reports, which they do, right? Collectors do. Sometimes it's just not 100% accurate. It's not 100% verifiable. And that's what you need to be able to do. Have you heard of, let's see here. Ah, uh, good Amex question. I like this. I think that would move. All right, Jerome Griffin. Hey, Brent, I just wanted to say you've been a big help. Thanks for your information. Went from 550 to 710 in four months. Still got a gas bill to go. Uh, your still got a gas bill to go. Your dog, a good job. Okay. Uh, oh, you're doing a good job. Okay. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Keep it up, brother. Appreciate you, Jerome. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see. Okay, great. Okay. So have you heard of people getting accounts reopened with Amex, but didn't owe? Had someone making payments for me, but they forgot they had a previous stop payment for Amex, stop payment for Amex, and it took three attempts to pay them? Mm, I don't know exactly what you're saying, but let me tell you. So if you find yourself in a situation with Amex, you're dealing with them, doing charter, off, doing collections, or whatever, you're disputing, you're getting off your reports, how do you potentially get a new account with them? If they're like, uh, I think we see that you might, you can become an authorized user on an Amex. It kind of resets the clock for you. You can get in that way, or not the clock, but it resets the ability to, to get in there. Uh, reopening account, if they've closed it, you probably need to get a new account. Um, I was with USAA. They didn't really reopen the same account. They just got me a new credit card. 
but it was I, I knew it was the same account, the same trade line, same line of credit, everything, right? So they'll they potentially be like, oh, you have a gold card, green card, or whatever. You could potentially get the same card again. I just came across your info. Love it. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. If you're watching the replay, if you stuck along this far, uh, phenomenal. Please give this video a thumbs up if it's helping you out. Remember to subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications so you can jump on these live streams. Yes. And comment below. Let me know how you're doing in your credit repair journey. And if you need any support, you have any questions, feel free to email me. All right. We'll do a little bit more. We're almost at the hour. I'm probably going to let get things going. I got to, surprisingly enough, I got to uh, get the dog to the vet today. He's healthy. He's fine, but he's got to have an exam. So, of course, we're going to do it Saturday, Sunday is the weekend. I know y'all got stuff y'all got to take care of. But again, my email is available to you guys. So make sure if I didn't get to your question, email me. I will get back to you. Okay. Let's try and get a few other things. All right. And you guys are helping each other. So I appreciate that. Which package can I get with all the letters? The Beyond Committed Package. You can get it. 609CreditPair.com gives you everything you need. All right. Let's see. Can I put the information in for your credit repair? Yes, if you want to, the awesomelifegroup.com. All right. Uh, we'll reach out to you. We'll make sure that we get everything squared away with you and your financial situation, your credit situation is going to get on the road to recovery. Okay. Ah, how long should a person wait to apply again? It was a platinum card. Just make sure you're available and open to that level, Platinum Amex. So they probably want to see very good to excellent credit. Once you're available in that situation, boom, you got it. And individuals can get multiple cards. People have golds and Amexes, business Amexes and Platinum and all this stuff. You can. You absolutely can. All right. Notarizing ads to the paper trail. Yes, it also makes it a legal affidavit that must be responded to. Yes, uh, Yankee. Of course, of course, the collector's going to say, oh, the billing statement is validation. Of course, because that's all they got. You can plainly say PIB. Yes. But more importantly, we have a letter that you can send to the credit bureaus saying that the collector fails to validate properly. We have that letter in the Beyond Committed Package. It's part of the process of disputing with the collector. You'll have a couple of rounds with the collector. And during that process, you have a letter that you can send directly to the credit bureaus. You also can reach out to the credit tour, the original credit tour, ask them if they have everything if they don't and it's been sent to the collector, you can hit them up, the creditor, with the 623 method letter. And now they're trapped up. How are they putting information on there? How does the collector put information on there? And how's the bureau verifying it? If they all come back saying, oh, well, we use the Oscar and they said this and uh, the creditor says that it's valid, but the, they don't have information on it anymore. We sent it all to the collector and the collector says, oh, well, we're sending you statements, which isn't 100 percent verified. Yes. Not only is that a stronger case to present to courts or the CFPB or Better Business Bureau, but none of them want to take responsibility, which basically means that none of them have the information, that none of them can verify, and none of them can continue to report this information. That's why we see deletions come up. That's why we see deletions when, I don't know if you were around when I talked about Star and Star was saying she got deletions when uh, she complained with the Better Business Bureau. This is why. They do not want to play this game, okay? They do not want to play this game. Can I ever reapply for disputed accounts? Yes, you can. Uh, it just depends when, how, and why, right? So it's intriguing because there are people who have done business with, let's say, a big bank. I'm not going to name any names, and I don't want to put nobody out there, especially myself, right? But let's just say I did some big business with a big bank one time, and I'm not working with a big bank again, and they want to qualify me for uh, credit and loans and all this stuff. Is because you're once again – lending worthy, right? So you've got a good credit again. They're looking at it. They say, this is wonderful. This is great. This is fantastic. And again, they're not keeping records, right? They're sending over to the collectors. They don't want it anymore. They've securitized debts and if they've sold it, they've already made their money. But if they want to make more money, you're done right. They want to make more money. And to do so, they can provide you a line of credit and they can utilize that and loan out against what you promised to pay again and again and over and over 10 times. Okay. It's how the banking system works. I don't want to get all into it and all this nonsense. But if you look into it, they're allowed to lend up to 10% of what they hold in reserve or something like that. They're high power money. Okay. It's very interesting. Very interesting process. Okay. 
The LexisNexis tax lien, okay? Tax liens are supposed to be off your credit report. So you can dispute directly the 609 letters. If it doesn't come off in the first round, that's the complaint and it's, you can go straight to court because that's the law now. They're not allowed, they're not even allowed to put tax liens on credit reports anymore. Guys, this has been phenomenal. I'm excited for you. If you need anything, again, email me. Okay, I'm gonna put my emails up here again. We're gonna, we're gonna sign off for the afternoon. Yeah, you guys enjoy your weekend. And I hope everybody's last weekend, their last holiday weekend was awesome, okay? It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Again, if you want to join, you're not part of the subscribe tribe, please hit the subscribe button, put down in the comments below, subscribe tribe, hit the bell for notifications so you can jump on these lives that we're doing. 609creditpair.com, theawesomelifegroup.com is where we can do it for you. Give a thumbs up. I appreciate you all. Love you all so, so very much. It's such a pleasure to see over 100 people here on an on afternoon, on Saturday afternoon with me to help facilitate and you guys are helping one another. I see you in the chat as well. So again, until I see you in person, I will see you guys on the other side. Take care and thank you very much.